Hiya, buddy. Hi, mate. I'm just going to do a quick inventory checklist with you. Is that all right? Right. I've got pants, socks, clothes, toothpaste, deodorant, yeah. toothbrush. Uh, I've got my binoculars yeah. and anything else? Yeah, mate. No, that absolutely sounds like you've got everything. Right, mate. I'm on my way. Cool. Right, well, I'm very excited. I will see you soon. Bye. See you soon. It's a road so trip. I'm so excited. I'm so I love a road trip. Here we go. Here we go, mate. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh yes, please. <laughs> Maybe that should be one. All this, uh, all this driving, isn't it? Are you joking? Well, I Are you enjoying the, the view? It's lovely. I just, I'm not often a passenger. That's all. It's quite nice. Oh, mate, are we nearly there yet? Because you know what? I'm a bit knackered. I need a wee. Yes. I will stop off in a minute. You just had a wee. Yeah, no, but I need a break because I, I don't know if I can take any more of your stories. My ears are bleeding. Oh my god, right, fine. God's sake, you're doing my nutting. Oh my god, what do you want to stop breathing? Yeah, that'd be, that'd do me a favour actually. <laughs> We're only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> really here. We love each other, really. Then. Hey up. Welcome to episode 14 of Into Wild. So we're not in Yorkshire anymore guys. We're also not actually in England. We are currently in the very beautiful, very sunny area of Pembrokeshire in Wales and very shortly we're going to be heading across to the island of, of Skoma. We are so excited. This has been a very long time coming. We've talked about going to Skoma, haven't we, for we have years? We have a long, long a time. A very long time. Um, and we're hoping to see lots of seabirds, puffins in particular, hoping for some banging shots of those to show you. So lots of marine life in general. So we're really excited. So sit back. Relax. And enjoy episode 14 of, of Into Wild. Wild. Situated off the Pembrokeshire coast, in a stretch of water called the Jack Sound, and rising ominously out of the choppy sea, the island of Skoma was cut off from the mainland after the last ice age. Known primarily for its varied bird life and other wildlife, such as grey seals, porpoise, and its very own subspecies of bank vole called the Skoma vole, the island also holds many archaeological treasures, such as Iron Age huts and settlements, from a time when the island was still linked physically to the Welsh mainland. 
The richness of the bird life on Skoma owes itself to the fact that there are no rats or other predators present on the island, and so those birds that rely on burrows for laying their eggs, such as puffins and the Manx shearwater, can do so without the risk of predation. This island, with its honeycomb network of burrows, is home to the star of this episode, the puffin. A sharply dressed black and white seabird with a huge multicoloured bill, the Atlantic puffin is often called the clown of the sea. It breeds in burrows on islands in the North Atlantic and winters at sea. In flight, puffins flap their small wings frantically to stay aloft, but underwater, those wings become powerful flippers that allow the birds to catch small fish one by one until they have a full beak. According to the Wildlife Trust, who manages this island for conservation, their most recent survey found a whopping 42,513 puffins, and I think we saw nearly all of them. We'd heard great things about the puffins of Skoma, but nothing had prepared us for just how many there are and just how close they get. So as it's me, of course, I'm on the ground. And I don't know if you can see this puffin here. I have had a little moment of tears because this is like a photographer's dream to get the most amazing puffin shots ever. Now my top tips for taking photos of puffins at Skoma. Do not be afraid to get on the floor. I am covered in dust and sand, but I don't care. I couldn't care less. Get these low angles and I'll show you what you can produce, but seriously, low angles, oh my goodness. <laughs> my goodness. Low angles and a shallow depth of field, and you can capture some very amazing puffin pictures. So we're at a part of the island of Skoma called uh, South Plateau and it looks out to sea here. It's the south end of the island um, and there's not a lot of times I'm speechless. Um, I'm surrounded by puffins. Uh, this island is going way beyond both Rosie and I's expectations of what to find. Um, the proximity that you can get to the puffins without causing any disturbance is unreal. Um, the island, the people on the island are excellent at telling you where you can go. You do need to stick to the paths. Um, Rosie and I had a moment earlier on, I think there's some footage of it, with um, a puffin that was really close. Um, and we had just a, a lovely experience with this puffin. But then one of the volunteers sort of just, and he was lovely, but he just said, don't forget, the puffins might be wanting to cross. Um, and Rosie and I did maybe fall into one of those moments of just getting lost in the moment and not thinking actually, do you know what, these are wild animals, we need to let it pass. And he, he was lovely with it and we thanked him and um, let the, as it happens, the puffin, I don't think it did want to cross, I think it was just having a little moment looking at my bag. Um, but Rosie's been in tears already because it's, it's unbelievable. Um, and I think I'm just going to sit here and take it all in and enjoy it. 
And we'll roll on with some more shots because it's just phenomenal. When visiting anywhere with a plan at seeing something specific, in our case, it was all about the puffins and other bird life, it's always great to have an extra treat that wasn't on your agenda. For me, that was Skoma's plant life. Although the island lacks many trees, there are only two on the whole island, Skoma has a fabulous range of other plants. In early spring, the island is carpeted with bluebells. These had pretty much finished when Rosie and I visited, but there are an, ab an abundance of other plants covering the island. Look anywhere and the colours pop. Some of the plants we found were vast stretches of red campion, patches of sea campion with their delicate white flowers, and the richly coloured scarlet pimpernel. So that's it, another another episode done, another adventure down. Episode 14 is finished, it's been spectacular. I honestly can't believe how amazing it is. I've cried because of how epic the experience was and just just brings home how important um, coastal habitats are for our, our UK wildlife. So I think, I think we're just gonna end it there and we're gonna have a couple of minutes just taking all this in before we get back on the boat and get back to reality. Yeah, Let's it's see. really been just a great day watching wildlife. Come, come to Skoma. And we'll Do see it. you next episode. Bye guys. Bye. Can I just say, sometimes Rosie Dutton, when you're out on a shoe, can become a proper pain in the keister. She's on one at the minute, and I hope this gets into the film, because she's proper on one. And we're here for a good time. And sometimes she forgets that. Sometimes Rosie Dutton gets into photographer zone, and she just forgets to have a good time. Look at her, pootling off with her. She's smiling now, but look, I tell you, sometimes, sometimes that woman, honestly, I'm going to get you some nice footage now for GoPro. This might get cut out. If it doesn't get cut out, what are you going to see now? I filmed this bit. It's beautiful. You've just ruined my footage.